this is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Robert Eger or <laughs> Robert Eggers, for those of you who want to be lay people, I guess. Um, the writer, director, probably many other things on The Witch, uh, which is coming out this week. Um, story set in the 1630s, I believe, uh, about a family who move into the woods and uh, sort of have to deal with some uh, witchly presences, I guess you would say. Um, one thing I want to start out with, which I found interesting, I saw a video of you saying that you were uh, afraid of witches as a child, like this was a fear that you had growing up. And I was kind of curious what if you could elaborate more about that. Just were you from the East? How, how exactly did that manifest for you or, or why was that something that you were afraid of? Yeah, I mean, I think that the the answer of why you'd have to talk with my, uh, you know, psychologist about, <laughs> but I think that, you know, um, certainly the, the earliest dreams that I can remember are nightmares about witches. Um, and, you know, I think, it, you know, in my early dreams, most of them are like Margaret Hamilton related, which I'm sure is not like a big shock. But even into my early adulthood, I continued to have witch dreams of more of like an archetypal nature that mm. I didn't completely like understand. Um, but I also like additionally, I grew up in New England, and um, you know, if you've been to like a you know rural New England, New England's past is kind of like all over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of uh, you know as far as um, places where white people started. Uh, you know, making shit uh, it, it was, um, you know, one of the earliest places around here uh, we were doing that kind of stuff so, um, you know, you have these dilapidated old colonial farmhouses and, uh, and you know, there is the mythology and there is the history but, like, as a kid uh, you know, the graveyard in the middle of the woods kind of had its own mythology and my own imagination mm. uh, that would, you know, grow into something Um one of the things that I found, I mean, I'm sure you've heard this before, that's interesting is that you sort of, by going in a more, I don't know, naturalistic route, sort of treating it as more like a realistic witch uh, kind of trope, you kind of went a different path than a lot of other people. You think about like the Blair Witch, Bell Witch, all that sort of stuff. It's like this supernatural, like over the top kind of presence a lot of the times is how witches or evil witches, I guess you should say, are portrayed. What made you decide to sort of try and keep it really ground in reality when, I mean, probably a lot of people have that expectation of like, oh, this witch is going to, you know, turn someone to stone or turn someone into an animal or blah, 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 you know? Um, I think that, you know, the idea of, um, you know, the reality that you believe in, like, you know, it it makes something real, uh, is, is interesting. So if the supernatural stuff is so over the top that you can't believe in it, then, um, I'm, I'm failing as a, as a filmmaker and a storyteller, you know, it's stuff that's kind of, you know, on that thin line. I mean, you know, you know, there is like, there, um, I believe it was in the forties that, um, a psychiatrist, um, you know, uh, made, I mean, I'm, I know that these are made today, but this is this one account that I re- read, uh, of, of someone, you know, making a, a witch, a witch's flying ungent, um, you know, cause basically you can't just fly on a stick. Like you can't, if you're a witch, you can't just get on it and fly. <laughs> you have to have an ungent, um, that has the power to make that happen. Yeah. Um, and, uh, depending on, you know the mythology, uh, you know, you know, but generally you're you know putting this on your genitals and your and your armpits, right? Uh, now, um, in in the w- worldview of my film, the active ingredient is the entrails of an unbaptized babe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, which certainly any white witches today would be find very offensive. Uh, but but that was part of um, you know the idea of the evil witch in the early modern period. But in any case, uh, like today, there's been people who've made you know, these witch ungents and have found that, you know, they, um, they, uh, became very sexually aroused and then blacked out, had, uh, extreme flying dreams. And this is interesting because yeah, even in the early modern period, there was discussion among, uh, you know, like high ranking, uh, people in the clergy, like, you know, do witches physically fly or is it only their, or is it only their spirits that take flight? So even then there was like kind of trying to understand like, you know, what are the metaphysical truths of, uh, this stuff? 
That's, I mean, that's a fascinating discussion to talk about. Like, the, the, like what is possible? What is, like, you know, you know, within the realm of possible? I just think that the treating them not as sort of, like, necessarily overly fantastical creatures and sort of grounding in some sort of, like, what is the idea that, you know, oh, somebody who was a witch might have believed, you know, like a, a child being a sort of source of power or something like yeah. that versus, you know, like creating like a river of blood or turning into a, a you know, whatever. Um, so one thing that I heard, and I'm not sure if this is in fact true, but I, I heard that the Satanic Temple has had several screenings of this movie and has approved of it. As, as somebody, like, not to say that this film is like, some satanic thing that people should be freaked out about or anything mm -hmm. like that. But is that add sort of a stamp that it's the subject matter has been treated with some sort of level of, um, discretion, tenderness, appropriateness, like that it's not just a complete joke in their regard in terms of how witchcraft and other things are generally treated in film. And, um, do you know if this is in fact true that they have screened the movie? Uh, look, in regards to the Satanic Temple, I'd just like to say it's nice to have fans and uh, sure. I'm not, no, that. I'm not saying that yeah, like, yeah. you're like yeah, yeah. But stuff. but I would say that I mean, you know we had um, we also had a screening for you know in in Salem who are experts on colonial history and um, you know and uh, English and New English witchcraft who also you know endorse the film and gives it give it a thumbs up and that is uh you know for me like very exciting <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's basically what i'm trying to say it's just not not that like the film is satanic in any way per perceivably um but that it just it has a level that you focused on the author of it and very important um regard and you know it's, it's it's one of those things that you think about witches in film and you mentioned you know like uh um the riding the broomsticks and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wizard of Oz, I was trying to think. Um, that it's become such a cliche in a lot of ours that that sort of leads credence to that sort of, um, that this is actually, you know, trying to be a, an accurate historical portrayal as opposed to just making, you know, a parody of something. Yeah, I mean, well, I think, you know, today we have, you know, um, you know, the, the various... Uh, you know, religions and ontologies with, you know, white witches and cunning folk and, um, you know, and then on the other side, we have this kind of like um, cliche plastic Halloween deck that's trying to be scary, but it's just kind of a, a joke. Uh, and all of that led me to a lot of confusion, and, you know, even as a kid and trying to like, I think, you know, in some ways, the idea of the quote, like witch hunt made me confused about how were women being like, you know, how did the Holocaust uh, of the witch Holocaust in Europe exist? How did the Salem witch trials work? Like if witch, you know, if, if evil witches w weren't real, like, it, we, you know, like I think we're kind of made to think that there was a kind of conspiracy where, uh, you know, members of the church would say like, you know, this is some bitch I don't like and oh, I'm yeah. going to call her a witch and take her out. End of the story. Yeah. Uh, Cause she's got power and I'm threatened by it. And so da, da, da. But I think that with all due respect uh, to like contemporary um, which is, I think that 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 is false. And most academics, um, you know, even people who are very sensitive to um, to to contemporary white witches, but people like Diane Perkis and Ronald Hutton and Jim Baker, um, you know, like y you know, they the, people like that. Uh, and certainly, I saw this myself in doing the my my own research. It's in in the uh, in the early modern period, the real world and the fairy tale world were the exact same thing for almost everyone, aside from like a few people like Reginald mm -hmm. Scott who are skeptics. But you know, they were the same thing. So, like, even if you believe that the evil witch only exists in the mind of the ignorant, like, uh, you know, the evil witch was a huge, huge part of like the collective culture, yeah. collective Western culture in the early modern period, and you know, and. The f and, and, and people, you know, I know uh, there certainly were people who were just, you know, you're a witch so I can get rid of you. But I think, you know, 90% of the time people really believed that these women, when they said, 
Age. They thought that they were capable of doing all the horrific, uh, like, you know, bestial things that this witch does in my film. They yeah. thought that they were really fairy tale ogresses. Uh, so, and, and, that, and that idea, that false idea, uh, has huge ramifications through histories. And, and, and you know, the idea that the, the, the evil witch in, in the, you know, in the early modern period manifested herself as men's fears, ambivalences, and fantasies about women and female power, and sadly and tragically, women's own fears and ambivalences about their power and motherhood in this extremely male-dominated society. I mean, like, we're, we're still coping with that uh, today. The shadows of that still exist oh, yeah. in the, today's, uh, you know, uh, unconscious and conscious. I mean, claiming female power in any kind of uh, positive way is something we're still grappling with as a cultural uh, whole, you know, so uh, that's why this is important, and this is why, like, you know, the witch archetype needs to be treated seriously. That's that's very well eloquently stated. Um, so <laughs> I've, had, I've had a no, year to, to think s- about it a lot. Um, one other thing that I want to talk about uh, is the uh, casting of the movie, and because it's such an authentic. Um, well-ground ca- uh, story. What was it like in terms of trying to cast children um, who are a huge part of the story um, to sort of fit in with it, to sort of understand what they're trying to portray, to try and keep them from going too crazy over the top? Because, you know, as they say, um, <laughs> and you have both of them, you never want to work with animals and kids. And uh, that, that, was a, that was a big part of this film for both of them. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, working with kids is great, and I don't really think it's it's difficult. I think that it just depends on the kids. Some kids are easy to work with. Some uh, adults are easy to work with, sure. and, you know, some are difficult. Uh, I think uh, what, 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 what was hard, the two things that made working with kids difficult um, is that is one is they have short hours, uh, which, of mm-hmm. course, they should have. But, but certainly with our budgetary level and our time constraints, that was very hard on us. Uh, then the other thing was for this film is protecting them uh, from the subject matter. So they did have like a disnified um, like understanding of what the story was. Interesting. Yeah, and um, and 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 while with the adult actors we're going into these really dark places emotionally and psychologically with uh, with with the children, it becomes like uh, dance choreography, puppeteering, <laughs> uh, Brissanian mannequin acting. That's you know, like uh, Lucas. Okay, stand there. Don't blink. Now open your mouth a little bit. Now breathe. <laughs> Breathe a little faster, breathe a little faster, breathe a little faster, breathe a little faster. And then before he laughs, you know, you cut and then you put a witch on the other side and he looks scared. So it's uh, very simple. It's, it's one of those things, though, you think about like years from now, like when they like watch the movie. I mean, I'm assuming these, some of these children probably are not watching this movie at their age. But, right. you know, like when they get to be a suitable age to watch it and they look and they're like, wow, this is such a different perception of like what it was like from what I remember. And it's, it's one of those things you just think about in life in general of like perceptions from childhood versus adulthood. And uh, it, it's just I'm sure it'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess I should start wrapping this up. Um, I want to say, uh, okay, the film comes out, uh, was it? the February 19th. February 19th, good, good memory. Um, is there a website or place people can go to find information about the film or... Uh, find where it might be playing locally. I mean, yeah, I mean obviously like Fandango you know, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, Google The Witch and tons of stuff will come up. Uh, but there, I'm, sure, I'm sure if you Google The Witch, there will be... No, no, I mean, if you it, right now, if you Google The Witch, it's only... It's us. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, you guys did some great search engine optimization then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, and in terms but, of... But there is, I mean, there is a website and okay. in, in Facebook, in, in Facebook, which you can buy uh, tickets and all oh, that fantastic. kind of stuff, yeah. Uh, in terms of you personally, you've been, as you said, at least a year probably a year and a half deep into this witch um, world what are is there anything else uh, do you have like a Twitter you want people to follow or are there any other projects that you're working on that you might want to mention so people can keep their eyes out for them because I imagine at this point you're like I am ready to start like diving into some I mean you know like it will be uh, it has been um, in 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 March it'll be six years of me working on this film Um. So something different might be a good. Well, I've been working on my uh, my next film okay. for over a year. So okay. um, and uh, uh, but yeah, I don't I don't really engage with social media. Um, 
Fair but, enough. I but appreciate that's, that. But that's that's you know whatever. It's in the works. Yeah. Keep your eyes out for it, Robert Eger. <laughs> <laughs> so Robert Eggers. My, um, this was a joke that was made before. The, yes. The, yes. yes my name, name is Robert Eggers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's it is in fact not as complicated as it sounds. Um, well, thank you so much, Robert. I wish you the best of luck with the wish, and I very much look forward to seeing what you do next because I'm sure it'll be equally as entertaining. I hope so, and thank you very much. Thanks for helping get the word out there. I appreciate it. Really Pleasure. do. Even Gaza can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.